So the baby chicks have arrived. They are here. So now I just need to get them out in the barn. Hey guys, it's Farmer Brad here and I have 100 baby chicks that arrived today and I wanted to do a video uh, of getting the brooder set up. This video is sponsored by Cackle, by Cackle Hatchery. They're a wonderful hatchery located in Lebanon, Missouri and uh, their flavor of Cornish Cross may not get the largest but I've had great success on them being super healthy, happy, and I've even had some hop up on roosts uh, in some of my chicken tractors. So they love to forage and get the grass. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get them set up, and then I still have to build out uh, some water and some feeder options that I'm gonna try uh, to make this brooder room set up a lot more efficient. So. Uh, Continue to watch and uh, see it all happen. First, I'm gonna put some uh, pine shavings down in this area. And you want to start with just enough pine shavings because you'll be adding some later on. And for me, I don't want it to get up too high. Pretty decent. No. So if you haven't ordered baby chicks from the post office, uh, they come in a box. And typically how that works is that the, when the baby chicks are hatched, they eat the yolk of the egg, and that sustains them for uh, three days. So, invoices for 100, and let's get this open. One, two, three. 31, 32, 33. One. And these also come with little uh, thermometers in there to help monitor the temperature. Twelve, thirteen, one, two, three, four, five, seven, 108. So they sent me 108 baby chicks. Um, typically, hatcheries will send you extra ones because within the first few weeks, there may be some that die off. So each one's going to get three more. So it'll be 36, 36, and 36. As you can see, none of them were, no deaths on arrival, which that is the thing that is huge. That's one of the reasons why I'm a super happy customer with uh, Cackle Hatchery, is they have a good breed of Cornish Cross meat birds. I mean, look at how healthy they are. Thank you. 
so we have 36 in each one of these areas. Now part of the reason why you want to sort of separate the area that they're in is so that they all don't crowd to one area. Now I'm going to add the uh, feeders. I'm going to experiment with an idea for the feeders. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut uh, PVC. Uh, this is like the sewer style pipe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this down here at this bottom. Okay. So, the goal with this is that this will create a little lip. This will create a little lip, and then I'll add another board here that will funnel towards the back. So then this will fill up with feed, and then they'll be able to eat from this area of it. And ideally, I don't want a gap underneath it. Otherwise, chicks might hide under it. So I want it snug. So let's see how that one, how that works. Okay, so now I have a board that will fit in here. And what I want to do is get it to right about there. But first, I'm going to go ahead and screw this PVC into the wood. get this side where I think it should be. slight gap there. Let's pour some chicken feed in there. See how that works. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. See if it works. I'm gonna put this wood shavings underneath there. But uh Or it looks like it should work. So there's the feed, and then it goes down to there. They're able to eat from it. Okay, so I cut this one down to size. Now I'm going to. plastic and I'm going to screw it down. There's that. And then uh, since this is my third one of doing, 
found out that if you put this screw about an inch up above there on both sides, that will give you about where you want that board to go. So I'll do that on this side as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang an automatic chicken water bucket here and then I'll daisy chain them. I'm going to go ahead and remove this garden hose adapter since I won't be needing that with uh, daisy chaining them. I'm just using this uh, adjustable chain. It looks like the lowest setting possible on here is what would be ideal. There we go. So I'll go ahead and get a uh, chain set up for the next one. There we go. Now I'll take this off. So then to daisy chain this, I have a splitter. So what I'll do is put one spot on here. And I'll put the clip in there. That one is good to go. And then I'll shove this one here. There, that's good to go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bucket on the outside of this window here. That way I can manually refill it with a garden hose or I can hook it up the float valve and it will feed will feed these buckets. Go. So that one is all geared there and then I'll just have to run a hose from here. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually I can screw this down here so it doesn't go anywhere. sort of stabilizes it a little bit. Now to make the bucket reservoir that's going to go on the outside of the little window here. Okay, so I have this bucket here and I ended up ordering these fourth inch uh, bulkheads. This is what they look like. So what I'm going to do is it should be about the same depth as the other one. So what I'm going to do is put the hole down in line from here so that it doesn't have issues balancing. And let's see how that is. Okay, that's that looks like just about right. So I'm going to push it in from the out from the inside. You want it very, very snug. So as you can see in inside here, I have it pushed all the way out 
and then I'm going to tighten from the outside. I'll get that snug as I can with uh, pliers. There we go. So I'll go ahead and, well, while I'm doing this, I'm going to also put a float valve in case I decide to uh, hook it up to a garden hose. Tubing comes in there, goes along there, comes along here, and I'm going to connect it right here. I got that there, I'll add another screw. There we go. Okay, now. All I have to do is hook up the garden hose, and we are in business. I'm going to place this bucket here and uh, screw it in so that this bucket will stay here. That doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. So now what I need to do is... Um, Cut off a section for the uh, garden hose to hook up to. Leader hose. And that will connect to the garden hose and to the float valve. So, remove this clip. I then push it all the way up in there, push it all the way until it doesn't go anymore, and then I put the clip back on. There we go. And then now, now I just take this and shove it in there. So then I have this clip onto here, and that's good to go. So now I'll go back inside the brooder and route the stuff. So now the system is filling up. Slowly fill up this bucket. And so yeah, it's not in any hurry. That's for sure, but I think it's also filling up all three buckets at the same time, so this is a good sign. <laughs> 